Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from usual, but in a good way. I want to tell you a story and I want to raise awareness for something that is very, very important. But before I do that and while I have your attention, pretty please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I would love to hit 100,000 subscribers by June. We are nearly there, we are getting close, so if you watch my videos and you like them and haven't yet subscribed, I would love it if you subscribe today. That would make me super Super duper happy. Okay, here we go. So last weekend I came back to Australia after 10 days in New Zealand where I was hosting a charity bike race, not riding it, just hosting it, called the Tour of New Zealand, like the Tour de France. It was an eight day race from the South Island to the North Island with about 160 riders all raising money for about seven different charities. Now while I was there I obviously met some amazing people with some incredible stories and the whole experience was a big perspective changer for me, understandably. And it got me thinking, you know, I have this platform and it's a great platform and I am incredibly grateful for it. I use it to speak about things that are important to me and also to other people in terms of what's going on in the world and I love doing that. But today I'm going to use it for something a bit different. I'm going to tell my story, which is also the story of tens of millions of people around the world. And that is the story of people living with epilepsy. So what is epilepsy exactly? Well, just for a quick summation, epilepsy is a neurological disorder characterized by frequent or semi-frequent seizures. These seizures or fits are caused by a disruption of the electrical activity in the brain which causes things to speed up rather than slow down. Sometimes fits cause convulsions and a loss of consciousness. This is called a grand mal. Others are smaller and can last only a few seconds and involve feeling faint or dizzy. These are called absent seizures or petit mals. I have epilepsy. I was not born with the condition, it manifested itself when I was 11. Nobody's quite sure how that happened since I don't have a family history of the condition, although doctors do have a few theories. There are different forms of epilepsy. Mine is temporal lobe epilepsy, which means it sits here on my left temporal lobe. I am really, really lucky in the fact that my condition is very well managed by medication and also by diet. I have not had a grand mal seizure since I was 13 and I very rarely have absent seizures. However, this was not always the case. When I was 11, I was a normal, healthy, active kid. All of a sudden, and I remember this vividly, I started having these really kind of weird sensations in my head. It would come completely out of nowhere, and the best way I can describe it is that it was like looking through the wrong end of a telescope, with the thoughts kind of running through my head, suddenly speeding up, and spinning around and around and around, and it would last anywhere from a few seconds to maybe a minute. Now, as an 11-year-old kid, I had no idea what any of that meant, and since the feelings weren't actually frightening or painful, I didn't tell anyone about them. I would now as an adult, but as a child, you know, you just kind of don't worry about those things. Unless, of course, you're a genius child who understands neurology. Pretty soon, I had my first grand mal seizure. I remember it very clearly. I was in a music class at school and suddenly I started having the weird feeling and I threw up all over the floor. A couple of my friends helped me up to take me to the nurse's office and from that moment, I just remember black. It was like going to sleep. Now, obviously I wasn't asleep, I was having a major epileptic fit. Now the next thing I remember was waking up with the mama bear of all headaches. My parents were there, a few teachers were there, I think some ambulance officers, all of these adults looking really, really worried. And I just remember as a kid, not being frightened, but just thinking through my horrible headache, what the heck is going on? I don't know what we're yelling about! Anyway, from there, obviously I went to hospital, I had a bunch of tests, I had some laughing gas, which was interesting because while I was on it, all I did was sing Christmas carols very loudly and in a very high pitch. Missed it! I should reiterate here, I was perfectly fine. I mean, I felt like crap, but ultimately I was getting a day off school. It was my poor parents who were going through hell. I mean, to this day, I cannot imagine what would have been going through their heads. And I'm just so sorry for them and so sorry that it happened and that it was just so scary. Long story short, after all my tests and discussions with doctors, where I finally revealed that I've been having these weird feelings, they worked out that it was, in fact, epilepsy. Thankfully, not severe epilepsy and not debilitating. They even thought there was a chance I could crow out of it by the time I was 16. Now, I didn't, but you know, that's okay. 
What followed were a number of years of trying out medications, changing medications, combining medications, trying desperately to see what worked, what would actually control the seizures the best. Now this was really not fun, especially while going through puberty. There was a lot of weight gain, I got bullied a lot, I had, for instance, absence seizures at school and high school, which meant that for several minutes afterwards I couldn't understand what people were saying to me while my brain kind of recovered. So needless to say, narky teenage girls didn't take kindly to any of that out of the ordinary behavior. I developed a bit of an eating disorder because of the weight gain, it uh, wasn't a fun time. But you know, I have the world's most incredible, wonderfully supportive parents and they got me through the whole thing. And finally, the doctors found the right medication, we got the dosage right and that was when I was about 16. I'm still on that medication today, the brand name is Lamictal, it is a very good medication and I do not intend to change it. So what now? How do I take care of myself? Well, obviously I don't drive, some epileptics do and that's their business. I don't because I just don't want to risk it. I don't drink at all because it messes with my medication and I'm trying my very best to get enough sleep every night because tiredness can trigger seizures. I also avoid things like flashing lights, I never swim alone and I don't take baths because the last thing you want is to lose consciousness in a bathtub full of water. I do shower every day though, for the record. Other than that, my epilepsy doesn't affect my life really at all. It is well under control, I have adapted, I'm fine. But so many people with epilepsy are nowhere near as lucky as I have been. There are cases of adults and children who have grand mal seizures every few minutes. And since every seizure does a degree of brain damage, that is not good for anyone, especially little children whose brains are still developing. I mean, I know how it feels when you come out of a big seizure like that, it is really awful. Your head hurts, your body hurts, you're exhausted. So having those every day, let alone minutes apart, well, that is just unbelievably horrifying to me. So, why am I making this video? Well, it's because of those epileptics who have not had the same good luck as me. Not enough is said about epilepsy in the public arena, which is a shame because it's not a small amount of people that have it. One in 50 Australians has epilepsy. It is the fourth most common neurological disease in the USA after migraine, stroke and Alzheimer's, and about one in 26 Americans will develop it over the course of their lifetime. About 65 million people worldwide have epilepsy and 80% of those people live in developing countries. Now that is really scary because obviously they do not have the same resources that that first world countries have to treat and control the condition. There's also a kind of historical stigma that comes with having epilepsy. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that people who had seizures were thought to be possessed by demons and worthy of an exorcism, which I would imagine still happens in some remote cultures without the medical knowledge of modern society. The power of Christ compels you. Does it, Jay? The power of Christ compels you. Is the power of Christ compelling me? Is that what's happening? The power of Christ <laughs> compels you. Even now, people don't really know whether it's a mental illness or a disease or a neurological disorder. There's a lot of confusion about what constitutes a seizure and indeed what to do if someone has a seizure in front of you. All in all, there's a bit of a lack of public information out there, which is bad because anyone can have a seizure, epileptic or not. Anyway, that is my story. It's not an uncommon story and I would really, really like as many people as possible to see this video. Not only to raise awareness of epilepsy, but I really do hope other epileptic people see this just so they know they're not alone. Any disorder like that can be a very lonely road, particularly if you don't have the wonderful support network that I have. You can feel like an absolute freak. You're not a freak. There are more of us out there than you realize and there are ways to lead a totally normal life. Some very gifted people throughout history and indeed today are epileptic. You have Socrates, Tolstoy, Charles Dickens, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Lord Byron, Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, Richard Burton, Napoleon, Sir Isaac Newton, Julius Caesar, Hugo Weaving, the actor has epilepsy. It is hardly a barrier to achievement or greatness. It's just a matter of persevering through all the crappy stuff because believe me, there is a lot of that. And having faith in the medical profession, have faith in your doctors and please be honest with them. Don't downplay anything. I used to do that because I didn't want people to worry. It is always a bad idea. Just tell your doctors everything you're feeling because they want to know. It will help them help you.
I've put a few links to some epilepsy organizations in the video description if anyone would like any more information, as well as the links to some epilepsy charities if you would like to help out in any way. Thank you so much for listening, and I wish everyone watching this video health, hope, and happiness. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.